The Orkney Islands off of the north coast of Scotland are remote, with a total human population of around 22,400, although there is still a plentiful amount of life, with one form of it being found nowhere else but here. This form of life is the North Ronaldsay sheep, named after the island from where they are located, North Ronaldsay, the northernmost of all the islands in the group, and are peculiar in regards to their diet. Before that though, it is important to go through the history and how they ended up becoming one of the most unique sheep breeds as you'll soon find out. With an area of around 690 hectares, North Ronaldsay is a small island, although it is nonetheless inhabited, with a current population of around 50 people, and it was also home to people many years before. The North Ronaldsay sheep are descended from the Northern European short-tailed sheep, an ancient breed, and although their said date of arrival is not known precisely, it may well have been as early as the Iron Age, which would make them potentially one of the earliest ovines to arrive in Britain. Because of their isolated location, therefore, they have evolved without much admixture from imported Roman and European breeds, and therefore are likely one of the oldest breeds of sheep in the UK as a whole. This makes them very unique and important in regards to sheep breed diversity, as as the Iron Age progressed, the original short-tailed sheep has been replaced by large varieties, with the modern, more iconic long-tailed sheep spreading so widely that by the early 19th century, the short-tailed sheep, including the North Ronaldsay, remained only in remote areas. Because of their lack of admixture with other breeds, North Ronaldsay sheep do look and act quite a bit differently to the sheep you may be familiar with with them for one being smaller than most, with rams typically weighing around 30 kilograms and ewes around 25, both standing around 41 centimetres tall at the shoulders, down to the combination of them being a naturally small breeze and also being more well suited to the cold and desolate environment. Their bones are also finer than other breeds, with their heads also being dished, sloping inwards. Despite their small size, they were historically bred and raised for their wool, which comes in a variety of colours. Most animals are white and grey, although browns, beiges, reds and blacks are all exhibited. They are also a double-coated breed, meaning that they have a woolly undercoat and overcoat. The undercoat tends to be finer and softer, suitable for garments that touch the skin, whereas the overcoat is coarser, with long hair that protects them from the cold and wet weather of their environment. Due to their small size, they are also nimbler than other more modern breeds, able to jump down from an overhanging rock or to tread lightly over boulders. Of course, their most notable trait is their consumption of seaweed, which places them among the marine iguana of the Galapagos Islands, as one of the few animals to have such a diet. How this came to be is quite the interesting story, and one that shows just how quickly natural selection can act. In 1832, a dry stone dike, best known in the context of stone walls, was erected on the island, with its construction being a part of the response to the collapse of the kelping industry at the time. The wall encircles the entire coast of the island, 19 kilometres, and is 1.8 metres high, making it one of the largest of its kind in the world. In recognition of this, the wall has been described by Historic Scotland as a unique and important structure, with it being designated as an A-list site requiring conservation. This offers it special protection, with any development to it having to be approved with conservation in mind. To provide a livelihood for those previously employed in the industry, the inland farmlands were reorganised and the North Ronaldsay sheep were confined to the shoreline to protect the fields for much of the year to conserve the limited grazing inland. Because of this and the lack of resources available, the sheep population turned to the now only consistent source of food that's been kelp and seaweed, with them undergoing a great deal of anatomical change in a rapid space of time to accommodate for it. Their digestive system from studies done on them shows that they've adapted to extract the sugars present in seaweeds more efficiently. Seaweed, instead of storing their energy source as starch, they instead store it as laminarin. Different enzymes are therefore required in the guts to break this down to glucose, the building block of starch, and the chemical which can then be used by the sheep. Essentially, the bacteria in the rumen of the sheep where the breakdown occurs was able to change in less than 200 years. A remarkable adaptation indeed. Their grazing habits have also adapted to their unusual diets. Instead of grazing during the day and ruminating and or digesting at night, as other breeds usually do, North Ronaldsays graze as the tide uncovers the shore, twice in 24 hours, and ruminating at high water. Feeding begins around three and a half hours after high tide, as the areas of kelp and seaweed are exposed. Four hours later, which is just after the low tide, said feeding ends, allowing rumination to begin. This cycle therefore reduces the chance of the sheep becoming stranded at sea by the incoming tide. Their access to fresh water is limited to the few freshwater locks and ponds around the seashore, which has led them to be very salt tolerant, although the underlying biological mechanism has yet to be fully understood. 
Returning to their digestion of seaweeds, they are able to better extract the trace elements of copper far more efficiently than other breeds due to seaweeds having a limited supply of said elements, with some studies suggesting that they are able to extract four times more copper from their diets than traditional breeds. This allows them to thrive off of this otherwise low quality food, although this does have a potent side effect, that being the susceptibility to copper toxicity. Because they are so efficient at extracting copper, if sheep consume large quantities of grass, as an example, high levels of consumption can be toxic for them, and there have been cases of fatalities due to the increased copper concentration in said food. In searching for their food, sheep will frequently swim right into the sea to newborn seaweeds when they get the chance. Although they have to be careful with this habit, due to them potentially getting swept out to sea or drowning in their pursuits. Another impact of their diets is in regards to their meat, which has been described as intense and gamey, with it also being a darker colour than most mutton, due in large part to their riding rich diets. The meat also tastes as if it's naturally spiced, so little seasoning is often needed, being humorously noted by some as them pre-seasoning themselves. They are classified by the Rare Breed Survival Trust as being a priority on their 2021 through 2022 watch list, with them being classified as such due to there being fewer than 600 registered breeding females and roughly 3,700 in total in the UK. Their harvesting is therefore limited and well planned out, with them being herded twice a year for shearing, counting, lambing and slaughtering, with this also being the only time they have access to grass feed, although many of them still much prefer to consume seaweed. They have been noticed to be quite aware of their situation, as well they've been noticed to initially run away and jump in and around rocks. Once they're caught, they know that when people appear they have a good chance of food and maintenance, and so are then happy to come up to people, and in some cases even offering their heads to be scratched. The sheep are still vulnerable however, mainly down to potential cross-breezing and climate change. The former could be a problem down the line in regards to the wall, which has created their niche in the first place, as since it was erected, the human population of North Romsey has fallen from 500 to around 50, and so many of the current residents lack the skills required to maintain the wall. Successive storms have also created large holes in the structure, with the cost of repairs being estimated as around £3 million, with one in 2012, in large part due to the lack of natural material and skilled labour. Climate change is also a threat to them, as rising sea levels means that their coastal environment could be compromised, although the results of this are yet to be seen. There has been a second population established on the nearby island of Askari, established in 1983 by Teresa Proberts and Simon Brogan as an insurance population, so they are still found in other areas, if indeed the North Ronsay population is compromised in some way. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.